Hi, I'm Leslie Maddox, and today I'm sharing with you a review of Matthew C. along with my uh, best tips and recommendations for using it in your homeschool. Matthew C. is a hands-on mastery-based math curriculum. I have used it in my homeschool all four years that we've homeschooled so far. Um, it's important to know that it's mastery based uh, because that means that it's going to each level is going to general, generally cover one main topic so for example this is epsilon i'm using this with uh, my oldest next year he'll be in fifth fifth grade so uh, he this level covers fractions um, so since this is a mastery based curriculum they're not they're not named for grade level. They're given these Greek Greek letters as names. So Epsilon, uh, I'm using it with my fifth grader. And since it's not done by grade level, you go to the website to take a, to have your student take a placement test to see where you belong. And I like that about this, especially for homeschoolers where often our students are maybe in one grade level in one subject and a different level for another subject. Um, if in math, let's say your student's having a little more difficulty in math, if they're like a fifth grader and would do better with a fourth grade math, you know, there could be some shame associated with that if your textbook says fourth grade. Uh, this avoids that by giving them these Greek letter names in, instead of grade level names for each level. So I do like that. There are a lot of... Um, things that go with math you see, a lot of elements uh, that you'll need to decide you know, what you need, what you have, what you don't have, and what you're going to need for each student. The core elements for this level are the instruction manual, which contains the answer key both for the workbook and uh, the tests in the back. Um, that's important to note because for a while there I was like, where's the answers to these lessons? these tests and they were in the back of this um, so then you'll also need the student workbook this is all your worksheets and then there's a separate test booklet and you really only need this if you're if you are going to test if that's something that you want to do in your home school i do test in my home school for for math it's really the only subject i test for right now uh, and this contains um lesson tests and unit tests and then a final a final test so if you test like I do then you could even decide kind of what tests you want to give do you just want to give lesson tests do you want to just give unit tests do you want to do you want to do the lesson tests and no unit tests but a final test you know you can kind of decide what what you want to do there um, you also need an integer block kit for the levels and that's key I mean this is Matthew C in the the integer blocks are the C part of, the, of that name. Um, there's also an instructional DVD uh, where um, the creator of this curriculum gives uh, a, each lesson. Um, he covers the topics for each lesson um, in that DVD. Uh, there's MP3s and, uh, or a song CD that you can purchase. And some levels require other um, resources. So since we're covering fractions this next year, there's this fraction overlay kit that I needed for the Epsilon level. I haven't even opened it yet, so, uh, but it's to be used, I understand, with, yeah, with the integer blocks. So you use it in addition to that. All right, so now let's see how uh, Matthew C is structured. Um, each level has uh, about 30 lessons. Let's take a look at the table of contents here. So see, we have 30 lessons um, here and then some additional information at the back. The student receives instruction for each lesson either via the instructional DVD, um, so you can put this on your big TV, or I think that the instructions, the DVD lessons may be in the digital pack. I'm not sure, I haven't used those. And then that would be, you know, you could watch that on your, on a tablet or laptop. But I like to put it in, in um, the DVD player and let them watch it on the big TV. Or if 
that lecture format doesn't work for your student, you could sit with them one-on-one -on -one and, and kind of read through what needs to happen and what they're learning and um, you give them instruction. Uh, it's important to note that the instruction manual is not written for the student. This is not a student textbook. Uh, this is truly an, an instruction manual for the parent to tell you how to teach the topic to your student. Uh, and that becomes obvious in certain parts, like here, word problem tips. Parents often find it challenging to teach children how to solve word problems. So this is giving you tips for, for how to teach the topic to your student. The student workbook is just that, and it's a student workbook. So let me show you like lesson three. Um, you can see here, this is the first worksheet for this lesson, and it does not have uh, teaching on here about how to um, work these problems on, on this concept. They're, they're not, so they're not getting instruction from these worksheets, they're getting it from you or from the DVD. And that honestly is probably my least favorite thing about this. I have a student who is very independent and does not like that. He doesn't want to receive instruction from me. Um, and so I wish that it gave some instruction here on the page. Um, the way this worksheets are structured are there's an A through G. So you have worksheet A, B, C, D, E, F, G uh, for each lesson, um, they are perforated, so you can pull them out easily and just give your student the number of worksheets that you want. Uh, the first three worksheets, A, B, C, are, are lesson practice worksheets. And then the D, E, F are systematic reviews, so you cover not just what's in this lesson, but what they've learned in previous lessons, and I really like that. And G's application and enrichment. Um, I sometimes use these, sometimes don't. I, I think they're, they'd probably be really good for students who are maybe just really love math and want, want more or are maybe gifted in math and um, want a little bit of an extra challenge. The way I use these this past year was each day I had them, my students do, a lesson practice worksheet and then a systematic review of worksheet each day. Like the first day of the lesson where I just gave them the instruction, I sat with them and, and watched them do it and, and helped them along if they needed it. And then the other days I just had them do it on their own. I'd check it after it was done and, and, and give whatever teaching I needed to give. Uh, any answer any questions. And then the, on usually on Thursdays I would give them the lesson test. Um, now, if I felt like they were still struggling with the concept, you can go to the website and the Math EC website and print out some extra worksheets to do to cover that concept more. Uh, and for me, when they took the test, if I thought that they had it and then they took the test and got less than a 90, to me that meant they needed a little more practice. You know, it doesn't serve anybody to, it's like, oh, well, that's okay, let's just keep going. If, if they need practice on it, topic, they need practice on it. Um, these math builds on previous learning, and um, since this is a mastery-based curriculum, that's even more so. With a spiral approach, the next week might be something completely different, and it doesn't matter. Uh, but for something like this, there's just no point in moving on if, if they don't really know what they're doing um, or if they're still struggling with the topic. All right, so that's how that's set up. For teacher prep, um, you're gonna wanna consider your students' learning preferences before using uh, this curriculum. And then I would say each week, you might wanna glance through the lesson and um, the instructions and tips for teaching each topic and make sure you you understand it and what they're trying to communicate. There's been a couple of times where I'm like, what are they getting at? Because they've taught something in a different way than I learned. And 
um, if I've tried, if I've strayed from the way they've taught something, that ended up kind of biting me in the butt later on. It's like, oh, that's why they did it that way. Um, and I can get a little cocky about that sometimes because I'm an engineer and you know I know math. But um, I've learned to kind of do things the way they're telling you uh, because it's all building on, you know, the future lessons are, are built on previous lessons, and. Um, if I don't understand what they're getting at with something, if just the way they're teaching it is different than I'm accustomed to, I may have to think about it a minute. Even if you do have them watch DVD, the DVD, you may still need to break open this book and explain something to them. The amount of time a student will need to spend on this every day will depend on how you want to use it and also on how well your student understands that concept. Uh, so for a simple concept, if you just have them doing one worksheet a day, then they could be done with that in 10 minutes. Uh, if, you, if it's a more difficult concept, or like, for example, long division, um, and especially if you have them do more than one worksheet a day, they could be spending 45 minutes on that. I would recommend Matthew C to su students that do well with interactive learning methods, since it is a workbook-based curriculum with hands-on elements. Um, a student that does well with visual and spoken word learning methods will also appreciate the instructional DVD, um, but if a student likes one-on-one -on -one learning, it will probably be better to use the instruction manual and teach them that way, uh, so they might really like that. I would not recommend Matthew C to students who strongly prefer learning via the written word because instruction. Um, is given through the DVD and through the instruction manual, which is written for the parent, and it's not given in the worksheets. I mean, you get your instructions about what to do in each section, but it doesn't explain anything to you. My very best tip for using Matthew C is do not move on from a lesson or concept until the student has mastered it. Um, future learning will build upon the current lesson, so moving on before a student is ready is only going to lead to frustration, loss of confidence, maybe even despair for both you and your student. Now, if you do have to step away from the curriculum, if you're in a lesson and that's just not working out for your student, you may need to cover that concept in your child's most preferred learning method. So that's why I did things like extra math and those dice multiplication games um, for my oldest because his strongest learning method is um, interactive learning. For another student, it might be doing some living literature. For another student, it might be um, you know, just some rote memorization, some get up and being physical uh, while doing the rote memorization with throwing a ball back and forth. So I would say that is in that situation where you want to look at your kid's most preferred learning method and see, okay, how can I, uh, how can we work on this math concept in that way? Um, and you might see some breakthroughs uh, doing that. If you're interested in more, videos like this one where I give you my tips and recommendations for incorporating different books and curricula into your homeschool, uh, please tap on the playlist to the side. That's where I will keep all of these types of videos. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.